Welcome back. In today's video, we'll be studying series and sequence. Where we'll dive into the arithmetic progression and the geometric progression. Before that, let's spot the difference between a series and a sequence. When we talk about sequence, a sequence is basically a set of numbers written in a particular order or based on a given rule. Most sequences are written with comments separating the numbers. So let's take a number like this, one, three, five, seven, nine, that, 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 that. Now, the dots following the number shows that the number or the sequence is an infinite sequence. That is the last member of the sequence cannot be found. The sequence keep increasing, it keep moving on, keeps moving on. So we can keep adding terms to the sequence. That is why we have that that follow the sequence. Good. So with this one, you can see commas separating the numbers. And the numbers shows particular trend. And the trend is that these numbers are consecutive odd numbers. One is an odd number, three is an odd number. 5 is an odd number, 7 is an odd number, 9, yeah, so they are consecutive odd numbers. So that is the order or the, the, the rule that these numbers are based on. So they are odd numbers. We can also consider this sequence. We have 1, 4, 9, 6, and 25, that, 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 that's our infinite sequence. Still separated by commas. They follow a particular pattern or a particular order or a particular rule. And the rule is that these numbers are a set of square numbers. Realize that 1 squared gives 1. 2 squared gives 4, 9, that's 3 squared gives 9, 4 squared gives 16, 5 squared gives 25, that, 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 like that. So these are just squared numbers. So this is a sequence. Now what about a series? When we talk about a series, a series is a sum of terms in a sequence. So when I just change the comma that you see, then I replace it with a plus or addition sign, I get a series. So taking my odd numbers, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, in place of the comma, when I put addition there, I get a series. So a series, as the definition holds, the sum of terms in a sequence. The same when I replace the commas in the square numbers with addition, that's 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 16 plus 25 plus that, that, that. I get um, a series. So that is a series. Anytime you see addition in between numbers that follow a particular order, it is a series. So now that we do this, let's dive into the arithmetic progression. We we'll start with the arithmetic sequence, and we'll consider these numbers 1, 5, 9, 13, 17, 21, that, 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 showing that the sequence is infinite. Now wait, what shows that a, a sequence is arithmetic? It's basically simple. So do you use whether a sequence is arithmetic? The only thing you need to know is that make sure the common difference between two consecutive terms is constant. The common difference between two consecutive terms is constant. So let's try to find the common difference between each term in this sequence. Let's see. So the difference between 1 and 5 is um, 4, right? Good. That of 5 and 9, we get 4, yeah? 9 and 13 we get 4. 13 and 17, we get 4. In that other, 17 and 21, we still get 4. So you realize that this, the difference between this number, set of numbers, is constant throughout. Hence, this sequence is considered as an arithmetic sequence. So anytime you have a sequence that follows a particular pattern, and you realize that there's a common difference between each preceding term, then that particular sequence is arithmetic. Now, the name given to this 4 4 that appears throughout, as I said earlier on, is our common difference. So, that is one of the key things in arithmetic sequence. So, with this, to get the, 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 the terms that follow, the, the, the terms that follow the sequence, that is the term after 21 after, the one after 21, like that other, we keep adding 4 4 4 to it because that's the common difference. So, to find the term after 21, we just add 4 to 21 and we end up getting 25. To get a term of the 25, we just add 4 to the 25 and we get 29, like this. So, so simple. But what if the question requires us to find, let me say, the 50th term of the sequence, instead of finding a term closer in the sequence? When that happens, it's basically simple. What we do is that we use a very nice and wonderful formula. And this is a formula. This, the formula I'm going to show is a formula that is used in finding the nth term of an arithmetic sequence and this is a formula 
u sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times t. And that is a formula. So let's move on as we use the formula in solving questions to be addressed with the formula. So maintaining our numbers, that's 1, 5, 9, 13, 17, 21, 25, 29. We are going to use our formula to find the nth term of this sequence. The nth term of this sequence. And this time around, we shouldn't forget our common difference, which is 4. So with our common difference, which is 4, we can proceed to find the nth term. So let's consider finding the fifth term of this sequence. So using the formula, u sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times z. Now, I would want us to explain the parameters in the formula so that we become familiar with a lot of terms in the formula. So, over here, u sub n simply means the nth term. So, it can be any of the terms in the sequence. It can be the third term, the fourth term, the 20th term, the 21st term, the 25th term, any of the terms in the sequence. a sub 1 is the first term. And as you can see, the first term in our sequence over here is 1. 1. Now, d, as we said earlier on, is called our common difference. And it's 4 in this particular sequence. Because it's an arithmetic sequence with a common difference of 4. So it's 4 over here. So now that we know our parameters, we can move further to find the fifth term of this sequence using our formula. So in place of n, we substitute 5, 5. However, we see n is 5 because we are looking for the fifth term of the sequence. So in solving u sub n becomes u sub 5, which is equal to our first term, which is 1, plus 5 minus 1 times our common difference, which is 4. So u sub 5 will be equal to our first term 1. Now, 5 minus 1 is what? 4. So plus 4 times our 4. That's our common difference. 1 plus 4. Now, 4 times 4 is 16. So u sub 5 becomes equal to 1 plus 16. So finally, 1 plus 16 gives us 17. So the fifth term of this sequence is 17. We can prove it from our sequence. So let's try counting from the, the end, that is from 1. So from 1, we realize that our fifth term will be what? 17. That is, 5 is our second term, 9 is our third term, 13 is our fourth term, and 17 is our fifth term. So obviously, our answer holds that the 17 is our fifth term and that is nice really really simple so with the same assumption we can proceed to find other terms of the sequence instead of just adding the common difference to it so let's consider finding um the 11th term of the sequence using the same formula so that we can we become impressed with the formula so that we can just manipulate the formula anyhow all right so the 11th term of the sequence we use our formula, same formula. So wherever we see n, we substitute 11. So u sub n becomes u sub 11, which is equal to our first term 1, plus 11 minus 1 times our common difference over here, which is 4, because it's the same sequence that we're using. So u sub 11 becomes equal to our 1, plus, now 11 minus 1 is 10, times our 4. So our u sub 11 becomes equal to 1 plus, now 10 times 4 is 40, and 1 plus 40 is 41. So our u sub 11 becomes equal to 41, and that is the value for the 11th term. So we can go further by proving it from our equation, sorry, from our sequence, whether our 11th term is 41. Now what's something? If our 17th term, sorry, if our 5th term is 17, then our uh, um 21 will be the sixth term 25 will be the seventh term 28 will be the 29 will be the eighth term so that means our 11th term is i mean three terms ahead of 29 so to get those terms we just add four because that's the common difference we add four four to each preceding term so when we add four to 30 29 we end up getting um 33 when we add four to 33 we end up getting 37 and the last one we should arrive at the fourth one. Add 4 to 37, end up getting 41. And that is the value for the 11th term. So with this formula, 
we can find any of the terms in a sequence given that it is an arithmetic sequence now let's work on arithmetic series so as i said earlier on a series is just a set of numbers in a sequence that have been added together so when we just replace a comments in a, a sequence with addition sign we get a series now how to prove whether a series is arithmetic is the same as proving how a series a sequence is arithmetic so what we do is that we just find the common difference so if the common difference is the same throughout that series is arithmetic so let's just take any of the numbers and find the common difference and see if it is it will be the same throughout so i prefer us taking 9 and 13. so we take 9 13 and we subtract we realize that the common the difference is 4. and it's the same throughout when we take 25 and 29 you get 4 21 and 25 you subtract you get 4 17 and 21 you get 4. it's the same thing throughout and that is very very simple so let's work on finding the sum of the first n terms of a sequence so when we are given a set of series like this we are asked to find a set of the sum of the first n terms for example will be the sum of the first three terms in this series when we ask to find the sum of the first three terms it should simply be one plus five plus nine one plus five is six six plus nine is on 15 so that will be the sum of the first three terms so that is it so we can keep going by finding the sum of the first 10 terms of the sequence sum of the first 20 terms of the sequence and that is it so to find it don't stress yourself by just adding values to each other we just use a wonderful and awesome formula that looks like this s sub n is equal to n into brackets a sub 1 plus a sub n over 2 and that is a formula that we use in finding the sum of the first n terms of the sequence. Yeah, we need to explain our parameters in the formula. S sub n is the sum of the first n terms. So if you want the sum of the first 50 terms, S sub n will be S sub 50. If you want the sum of the first 20 terms, S sub n will be S sub 20. So depending on the term you want to find, the n value changes. Now, A sub 1 is the first term of the series. And as you can see, the first term of our series over here is 1. So this is the first term. Now, a sub n is the nth term of the series. For instance, we ask to find the sum of the first three terms of the series. Now, in our series, the third term over here is 9. So a sub 3 will be 9. So a sub n is basically the, the, the number of the, the term you'll be asked to find the sum. So if the you are finding the sum of the first 20, terms of the series then the value of the 20th term is the a sub n if you if i've been asked to find the sum of the first 10 terms then the value of the 10th term of the sequence will be your a sub n i believe you get it now good so now that we are abreast with the parameters in our formulas in our formula let's use the formula in solving or calculating for the sum of the sixth term, the first six terms, the first systems in the series. So using our formula, S sub n becomes S sub 6, which is equal to 6 into brackets. Our first term, which is 1, and our A sub n, the C term of this series. When we start from 1, 1 is the first term, 5 is the second term, 9 is the third term, 13 is the fourth term, 17 is the fifth term, so 21 is our sixth term. So e sub n that is the e sub six will be twenty one, and we divide it nicely by two. Now s sub six becomes equal to not six over two is three, so we quickly get three, and one plus twenty one is twenty two, so we get six. Sorry, three multiplied by what? Twenty two. And three multiplied by twenty two is the same as sixty six. So s sub six is equal to sixty six. So let's check from our sequence, oh, sorry, our series, if this is indeed 66. So we add the very first six terms, that is 1 to 5 to 9 to 13 and to 17. And we add these and to 21. When we add these ones, we end up getting 66. And it holds. Now consider this. What if the question asks you to find a term that isn't found in your infinite series? 
let's say the 15th term of this series realize that this series doesn't it actually ends at the eighth term so we don't have a 15th term we have to go like um seven miles seven times we have to add do some addition seven times before we can get some of the first 15 terms and it's a whole lot so to get that we need to find the 15th term of the series so that we can get a value for a sub n after getting the 15th term of the series we quickly come back to our formula and substitute the 15th term in the formula so which formula do we use to find the 15th term we use the formula for finding the nth term of an arithmetic sequence and that formula is a u sub n is equal to a plus n minus 1 multiplied by d and that is the formula we use so using the same numbers let us find the 15th term of this series so our formula the 15th term of this series will be u sub n will be u sub 15 and our first term which is a so over here is one so one plus now our n will be 15 minus with this one times our common difference don't forget our common difference is four that is five minus one is four nine minus five is four like throughout this is average this is an arithmetic series so it's four throughout so four so u sub 15 becomes equal to one plus now 15 minus one is 14 so 14 times four so u sub n is simply equal to one plus now 14 times four is 56 56 so uh u sub 15 is equal to one plus 56 which is equivalent to 57 and that is the answer for our 15th term so now that we've got our 15th term we can proceed to find the sum of the first 15 term of the sequence so we use our formula that is the s sub n is equal to this n times e sub 1 plus e sub n over 2 so our s sub n over here becomes s sub 15 because i find the first some of the first 15 terms so it becomes s sub 15 which is equal to 15 times our first term which is 1 plus the 15th term which is what 57 that's the what we just found for all over 2 so s of 15 becomes equal to 15 now 15 times 1 plus 57 is 58 so 15 times 58 all over 2 now we can cancel generally 2 can go into this of 1 and into 58 29 times so s of 15 becomes equal to 15 times 29 and 15 times 29 is um 435 435 and that is the value for the sum of the first 15 terms of this series so with this formula you can find the sum of the first n term of the series so it can be the sum of the first hundred term the only thing you need to get is you need to know the the the, the term you've been given if the sum of the first hundred term you need to know the hundredth term and you need to just substitute it into your equation and you're fine so if you want to find the hundred term, that's what I've to showed you over here. Just use the formula u sub n is equal to a sub one plus n minus one times z to find that term and substitute it into your equation, and you are fine with that. So with this, we can move to our geometric progression. To assess our video on geometric sequence and series, kindly check the video description below to assess our video on geometric sequence and series.